Imagine being stranded on a remote island with just exotic birds, tropical fish and strange fruit for company. The Swiss family Robinson is the classic tale of a family's fight to survive on a desert island. But that was fiction. For the Busbys from London, it's about to become a reality. Richard and Denise work round the clock to fund their family's lifestyle. We never see each other. He works nights, I work days. But the long hours and time spent apart have taken their toll. I think we all lost it though. I think we've got out of interact as a family. So they've decided to do something radical. Jesus, Richard, what have we done? Can we not just go back to the hotel? Ah, shut up. For the next three weeks, home will be about as far removed from Harrow as it gets. No, 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 because I've been stalked by one of these pterodactyl things. Turning their backs on work, possessions and life as they know it, they're on a mission to find out what really matters in life. We're not thriving, but we're surviving. We're getting by. They'll have to build a shelter. It's going to knock down every tree that's on this island. It's kind of like Fork Knox by the time Richard's finished with it. Find their own food. Just what? grab it and bag it. And pull together. Today, you're going to have to paddle, paddle for me. Just tell me, left or right? You'll never let me do anything. They'll face some tough challenges. How in Christ's name do you expect me to kill that? But if they can get through this... I'll get so Life as they know it will never be the same again. This experience has definitely made me realise I am more than ready for a change. Nestled in the Gulf of Panama, just 85 miles north of the equator, lie the Pearl Islands. With miles of pristine beaches and lush tropical vegetation, it's a Central American paradise. Hundreds of largely deserted islands far from civilization. Panama means abundance of fish, and the crystal waters here are teeming with them. The small population who live here thrive on whatever they can catch and whatever they can grow. It's a 5,000 mile journey from Britain to the Pearl Islands. And at the heart of them is the tiny island of Membrillo, sitting just a few feet above sea level, 800 meters across and covered in dense forest. This deserted island will be the home of the Busby family for the next three weeks. Mum Denise and Dad Richard are joined by their two daughters, 17-year-old Layla, an art student, and 10-year-old Alana. That's our island. What's our island? That little stick in there. That's a rock in the middle of nowhere. That's not our island. I can't even see the beach on it. The family are taken to the island by local guide Gilberto. He knows everything about survival here. You have two beautiful islands, Membrillo and Membrillito. Which one? Which one? What are your choice? <laughs> I'll have one and she can have the other one. They're embarking on a three week long adventure. Do not attempt to catch me, you'll break your back. <laughs> <laughs> to see what they can learn from a back to basics life. Okay, come on. Let's go. They will have to make their own shelter, fish, and forage for food. Your mother's going to die. No, I ain't doing that. As well as scaling new heights. No, I am seriously not doing this. Oh, frig it. Uh, oh my God! Well, Thank you. Welcome to Wembley. This is your island. Yeah. This is it. This is it. <laughs> they may have been parachuted into paradise, but the reality of what they've signed up for is already starting to hit home. What are you looking for? We're no civilization, anything. <laughs> this ain't an island. It's a bloody big rock. Oh Jesus, Richard! What have we done? Can we not just go back to the hotel? Ah, shut up. <laughs> The Busbys live in Harrow, North London. Denise is a hairdresser by day and Richard a cabbie by night. They're a hard-working family who live to reap the rewards. Oh, I love shopping. Absolutely love shopping. We get money and we spend it. That's the way it is. Showering their kids with every gizmo in sight. We've got the Wii, Wii Fit PlayStation 2 TV and my DS. The mobile phone is my life. 
They've come to expect everything on tap. People say, oh look, you spoil the kids, but who can you spoil if you can't spoil them? Now that recession has hit, Richard's finding it harder to make enough money. He's having to work even longer hours just to make ends meet. It's having a big effect on family life, the fact that we're all so busy. My dad's always going to work at about six o'clock, so I never get to really see him. I feel pressured to provide for my family because if I don't, who else is going to? We used to have such a laugh. I think we all lost it, though. I think we forgot how to interact with the family. We used to go out and have a good time, but now we just don't do it, and I didn't miss that. With all four now leading increasingly separate lives, they've begun to lose sight of what family life is all about. We argue every day. I think it's kind of daily routine. Turn it off. No. You unsociable madam. But it's mine. Denise thinks something's got to give. So she's made a brave move and signed them all up for an experience she hopes will bring them closer. I think what we'll gain from the four of us being together on the island more than anything is... I think we'll all remember what it is to have a laugh together. But being marooned in an alien climate thousands of miles from home is no laughing matter. They must work together like a family because here the life is not easy. Gilberto takes the family through their provisions box, which contains the barest essentials. Everything you need for living here in the island. Good. Fishing, yes, all laws and that, that'll do. Water container, matches, rough ropes, and everything for kitchen, OK? OK. Yeah. And there you have food, yeah. rice, bread, cornflake. Richard, they spam. I don't know who's going to eat spam. I love spam. spam. Oh. Spam's good for you. Disgusting. And this is food. It's for three days, remember. You have the boat there for fishing, for cross to the other island. OK. The family also have gas lights, basic tools, sleeping bags and plastic sheeting. This is the only equipment they'll get for the next three weeks. Gilberto will be back to see how they've got on, but for the next three days, the Busbies are on their own. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. See you in three days. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God. Quick game back, I want to go. Not used to spending so much time together, the family must now live and work as a team. There's civilization over there. Who's going to swim for it first? Oh, help. What are we going to do first? Shelter. Shelter, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Get on and build the shelter, yeah? Yeah. Just yeah. in case it starts raining. It's going to get dark soon. No, it's just dark somewhere about that. Yeah, yeah and I think, cos everyone's shattered, so let's let's get a shelter going, get a bit of food going, and then get up early in the morning and get our bearings. Richard is quick off the mark. He spotted two useful trees that can form the basic framework of the shelter. He's already got a plan. Just trying to get something up before it gets dark. And it's not up for negotiation. Why don't you um, do them sticks coming down to the floor. No, no, no. He's not going to take one bit of advice. <laughs> You're just not going to let me get involved, are you? So the thing, I've got nothing to say. Where them white stools? Where them stools from? Banned from taking part in the build... Come on, come and help me make a broom. Layla, come in. Denise looks for something else to do. There's another one. I've yeah, just seen a spider web. I'm not going further in. Don't, Mum, so I won't do it. Do you reckon that's going to make a good enough broom? No, you're banging it. Sweep it. Oh, do you know what? The thought was there. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a far cry from housework back in Harrow, where Denise keeps a tight ship, doing all the cleaning... Does anyone want butter on their sandwiches? ..making all the meals. We're doing all the cooking on the island, with Richard standing over me going, and you can't cook it like that, we'll all be poisoned. And looking after the kids. Lana, come on. Well, tip your head up straight, cos it'll pour out your mouth. She's the boss of the house. You know, you sit when she says sit. Under the table, now. But despite running the family home, Denise feels her efforts are never quite good enough. I will try and do something. And after five seconds of watching me try and do something, I'll be told, for God's sake, give it to me and let me do it. He treats me like the hairdresser that I am. You know, like I've got this sponge for a brain and like I don't know anything in life. 
Determined to take on a larger role here, Denise tries another tack. Should we go set out the fire? Will you or like the area? But true to form, Richard takes charge. What, you want the fire right over there? Can't we have the fire there? No, because I don't want it too near where we're staying, because you've got the wind, it might blow the smoke in and it'll get all smoky. No. Just, just clear that area like Lana's doing, yeah? All right, oh, God's sake. Layla, are you actually going to do anything? I'm scared to touch it. My hands are dirty. It's been four hours since they arrived on the island, and with Richard working alone, there's still a lot to do. I can't see he's going to bed tonight. And despite some frantic digging and hammering... Just rushing against time, because it's going to get dark in a minute. Night descends before the camp is complete. Oh, God, this is really Blair Witch dark, isn't it? <laughs> Richard's got the fire lit, and Denise prepares their first island meal. Cowboy sausage and beans. I miss me oven. It's not fun at all. Nearly ready, yeah, go and sit down there. Woo! <laughs> it's six hours since the Busbys first set foot on the island, and there's one job that's been completely overlooked. The loo, we need a loo. I can't pee in a bush in the dark, I'll have a heart attack. So we're gonna have to pee in a bucket. As Richard puts the finishing touches to the shelter. What are you doing? Just sit down, child. The girls settle in for their first night on the island. Sit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. I've never camped before. So I think I was camped once in the Isle of Wight and it was a nightmare, so. It was one night, never bothered again, put myself into a hotel and that was it. Denise may be new to the conditions, but Richard's behaviour is all too familiar. You yes, took over as usual. I know, but it wasn't my fault. Yes, I was, sort no, of, I was, was in a rush for it to get no, dark. you yes, took sort. over as usual, like you do at home. Don't take over here. Over the next few days, tensions continue to mount. Your backstroke was stronger than your... Oh, yes. It was. The quest to become self-sufficient <laughs> tests everyone. Just spear it. No, just what? grab it and bag it. And the family discover they're not the only ones fighting to survive here. Oh, look at that, holding that net. And that wasn't there when we put it out. It's day two, and the family's first night in tropical paradise was a tropical washout. Yeah, I know, that's why I'm going to hang it out. They're very tan. I'll get these things up, but what I'm worried about is rain. That's why I want to get this shelter done again. Yeah, I know, well, that's why I'm clearing it out for you. My first night, horrendous. It's my worst experience, actually. Yeah, no, let me worst experience that. that I've ever had. Go away, Dad. We're not putting makeup on. No, no, Layla woke up, and what came out of her mouth was not ladylike. Bad mood, piss off. The rain sort of came in the edges, so we all had to squidge into the middle. The family have all had a wet night, but rather than fix the shelter they already have, Richard wants to start all over again. Where we slept wasn't big enough, that's what I'm doing now. Because we had all the bags, they were all wet as well, and it was all in there, and it was a bit cramped. Oh, this one wants a wee, so I'm going to have to go with her, Richard. Can't you go in the sea? It's a lot cleaner to go in the sea. Can you work me, Come on, come get the bucket. I have to go in a bush, right. Despite the fact that they still don't have a loo and should be starting to look for food, Richard has grand designs. That's a bit big. What are you doing with it, Richard? Building a house. In Richard's world, there's no such thing as half measures. I built all this. It started off as a little project and it just got bigger. When we get there, I'm sure they're not going to have an ensuite bathroom. I'll be doing all the building, I think. They'll probably be passing me things, like pass me a nail. Denise will be picking out wallpaper. Richard loves to be king of his castle. He'll take over. He'll be Mussolini out there. <laughs> yeah, I'll see. We won't be allowed to try anything. Cos we're oh, no, guys. they can. I'll let them do it. I'll let them get on with it and see what happens. Then I'll get bad. So he fights to stay the man of the house. He does fight. God love him. He tries so hard. It's a very much a female-dominated house. Yeah. Even all the animals, they're all male, but they've all been neutered. There's nothing's come in this door and kept its testicles more than six months, apart from Richard. 
<laughs> Back on the island, Richard's still on a one-man mission. He's going to knock down every tree that is on this island. It's going to look like Fork Knox by the time Richard's finished with it. It's horribly humid and a sweltering 34 degrees, but Richard's determined to do it all himself. Should I start cutting the ends off? No, 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 don't. Why won't you let me do something? Because, I don't know, I just... But I'm bored. I'm just running around chopping everything down and making things, and you're telling me, sit down, go away, stop. I'll just let him do what he wants to do and just stay out of his way. You'd be better off sometimes doing that with Richard. If you get in his face, you just get snapped at, so just stay away. Denise isn't the only one being pushed to the sidelines. We got sent away. We're not allowed up there. We're not allowed to be in there. They're working. So we have to sit down here and play frisbees. We'd like to help, but they don't think we're responsible. I already miss my iPod. I don't. I already miss my phone. On the face of it, neither sister is cut out for island life. Art student Layla takes her appearance very seriously. I'm planning on coming back tanned and skinny. How about that yeah. one? Dyer, I know. I'm going to take my makeup with me. I know it's going to end up melting down my face and it's going to be dripping off my cheeks. I don't care. Alana is gadget mad. It's a gaming chair. It's, she loves her PlayStation. She's got lots of games and it plugs in and it, it vibrates. Alana, you might come back from this island and say, right, Dad, get rid of the telly. Oh, yeah, right. You want to go fishing tonight? Like many sisters, they love to wind each other up. <laughs> Me and my sister Leila do not always get on. Do you tell her? It's the start in now, the fighting stuff. She hates you because you're always shouting at her. I'm not always shouting at her, actually. But there aren't any computer games to fight over back on Membrio. Here the girls have nothing but hermit crabs to play with. Sadly, they're inedible, which means it's back to dried rations for lunch. Chicken noodle soup. Get yourself some bread. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Banned from helping Dad, the sisters strike out on their own and do the most useful thing of all. They hunt for food. The jungle-like interior of the island is so far unexplored. There is vital food to be had here, if only they can find it. There's cormorants all over the island. They look like pterodactyls. They sound like them as well. Almost prehistoric to look at, you know? It's a bit like Jurassic Park here, really. There's something on my hands. Don't say that. Where are you going now? Before long, they spot the first signs of food on the island. They're not ripe enough yet. Guess we can't eat them. I spy in my little eye something in a bit of tea. Um, trees. Yeah. Yes. I didn't realise that I'd actually like it here so much, but I do. I just really like nature. I don't know why. <laughs> Whoa! Eventually, the girls stumble across a bountiful crop of what appear to be oranges. <laughs> Not bad. Oh, yes, it is. They get fried. They get. You're the one uh... who it. It's a start, but a box of sour oranges won't keep them going for long. But there is some good news. Whilst they've been gone, Richard's completed the new look shelter and dug them an all important loo. Where's the toilet? It's dug. Got a toilet seat. And look out to sea as they're sitting on there, doing whatever they've got to do. There's still 24 hours to go before Gilberto returns, and with their supplies running low, finding more palatable food is tomorrow's top priority. <laughs> It's 7 a.m. on day three, and it hasn't been a good night. I think I got about four hours sleep last night. I think it's just the heat. Their shelter might be bigger and more watertight, but a roof made out of plastic sheeting in a tropical climate is a deadly combination. You do get very sticky in there and sweaty, and it's not pleasant. Worst hit is Richard. I can't swallow. Yeah. 
I feel right though. I went to the loo. And I felt all dizzy, I nearly fell over the side. I think it's heat stroke. I reckon just yesterday he overdid it and it's just heat stroke. Over the last two days, Richard has insisted on doing everything himself, and now it's taken its toll. I think it's just going to lie down. I really think it's just going to lie down and take it easy. It's going to be another hot one. This like couldn't this. happen at a worse time. The family are still relying on their rations to live off, and Alana's refusing to eat most of those. She didn't eat well last night. She didn't eat well. She doesn't eat well anyway. I was trying to get her to eat a bit of pasta, but because it was in a tin, she freaked. So we could be on our way home if she don't start eating. It's time to stop relying on the dwindling supplies. They need proper nourishment, and the waters around the island are teeming with fish. But the only person who knows how to catch them is Richard, and this is one job he's in no fit state to take on. See, I think he thinks, cos he's surrounded by girlies, he's got to look after us, you know, and he's got to be the boss. So we let him think he's the boss. <laughs> I think that's our for Richard's problem. I think he has to feel needed. The birds know how to do it, but then as I ain't got a beak and I can't throw myself in head first, there's not, not much I can do about that. It's an opportunity for Denise to prove herself. So there's only one thing for it. Gilberto's fishing kit is coming out. <laughs> Shit. What's that for, then? I don't even know what I'm doing. Don't I need to know if something's got it? How do you know if something's got it? The only trouble is, hairdresser Denise has never fished before. No, there's something not right here. But I can see fish out there. But without Richard's help, the chance of a fish supper is looking less and less likely. Right, go on then, flick it. Denise is doing her best. They came here to become closer as a family, but after three days alone together, they're nowhere near working as a team. Rather than teach Denise and the girls how to get involved, Richard has driven himself into the ground, and Denise has had enough. Yeah, I think we're ready for Man Friday now. Definitely ready for Man Friday. I am. I don't care about this lot now. I am. Me and Alana want fish for supper. It's been four days since the Busby family arrived on their desert island in Panama. Dad Richard has built a shelter and fashioned an exotic tropical loo, but they haven't done so well in the food stakes. Now local survival guide Gilberto is back to inspect their handiwork. Hello, how are you doing? Not bad. How are you doing, Richard? All right, not bad. Oh. Under the weather today. Yeah? Yeah. OK. Oh, what you did? Beautiful you cam. Thank you. Show me, show me the cam. What you did? <laughs> Thanks, sure, sir. Strong, I'm resistant. Up. But he's quick to spot the key mistake Richard's made with the roof. It's not hot in the night. It's not a little hot. It's very hot. We can make better. Yeah, OK. More fresh and more resistant. Yeah. And more beautiful. Can you help me? You sure. To make better? Sure, I'll come. OK, let's go. With Dad out of action, it's Denise's chance to shine. I will teach you how to cut the, the leaf, right? OK. Why don't you drop? OK. OK? <laughs> and cut it. Is it OK? Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> you try it? I'll try. OK. Okay. Yeah! And the hairdresser from Harrow proves to be a model machete student. Good! <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> you are now under the Jane of the Jungle. <laughs> Spurred on by her success, Denise gets on with the job in hand. But Richard can't help himself from interfering. Fingers. <laughs> Shut up, Bugby. Listen, I got these palms down myself with no help from you, so bog off. Do you want the better saw? No, this one's fine, thank you very much. OK. He's horrible to me, isn't he? Treats me like an absolute wanny. That's it. It's good, isn't it? With the shelter sorted, food is next on the agenda. Alana, in particular, is struggling with the basic rations, but so far, all the family have found are sour oranges. 
In Mermillo, you can get uh, many fruits, many food in the island. The island gives you everything. Now you, you must know where is each thing in the island. Make much better. Gilberto finds the first source of food just a few meters from where they've been camping. Okay, here we have this plant. This plant is yuca. This is saying like patatas. Like you potato. can eat. Yeah, like potatoes. Yuca is a root vegetable native to South America. Not dissimilar to the turnip, it's rich in carbohydrates and a great source of energy. Oh, Denise, look! And another tropical favorite is just around the corner. Valentines! You can eat right now, like this. You can fry it, or you can put directly in the campfire, and you can eat. What do you think? Good. And they can even jazz up their island diet with a bit of local flavor. Here we have culantro. It's a very nice herb, like a smell. You can eat to, to a make house, chicken. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've got their two veg, but what of the meat? or in this case, fish. The waters of Panama are full of bream, red snapper, yellowfin and grouper. But how to catch them? To use this place to put the net into the water. Yeah. OK? They've had this net since day one. I don't know what to do. But this is the first time they've actually attempted to use it. Captain Birdseye ain't got one this big. Gilberto wants them to fish like the locals, adding floats to one end and weights to the other. This way, when the tide rises, the net will stretch out, catching any passing fish. You can help us there, with the stones. Yeah. You know, high tide can't begin to fall yeah, here. Yeah, of course it will, because that will... Yeah, 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 yeah. Congratulations. Fisherman. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. While they wait for the tide to turn, Gilberto points out the island's best source of bait. Are we eating snails? No, we're not eating snails, they're for bait. Oh, <laughs> want to... how many? Eight, ten. Ugh, Jesus, no. Jesus, look. And now we, we put the bait. And now <laughs> we will put in the hook, please, Denise. Me put it in With the fish hook. delicacy oh, attached, the line is cast. OK. And it's not long before Denise gets her first ever bite. Oh, you're bad. What do I do? What do I do? We you. don't eat, but... It's an ugly bugger, isn't it? It's not good. It don't look good. No good, no good taste. No, it don't look yes. good. Whilst pufferfish aren't rated for their flavour, there are plenty more fish in the sea. But hunger is setting in, and all hopes now rest on the net. One, two, three. We bring it. Wow! Oh, well, well, look what we got here. Good, look. Now you must be careful, OK? Still alive. Look, it's small, no, it's good fish. Yeah? You can eat without problem. OK. <laughs> this is a huge boost for the family. I think he's going to get out of the bucket. Still alive. <laughs> Dad! Today we have a lot of fish. <laughs> Look, big fish. <gasps> Look! How cool is that? Now we will clean Plenty the fish, fish, OK? You want to try it, Leila? OK. Do it, do it, come on. Okay. For the second time today, Dad is having to stand back. Are you all right with that knife? It's okay. very, very sharp. And it doesn't come easy. Hey, what this is Brin. Take here, with the left hand. Yeah. You super the fish and do it. Okay. Here. That's it. <laughs> I'm shit there. Good, good, you are, you're doing well. Slow. Dad has this thing about doing everything. But it's quite fun to get in there and do some of the work yourself. Strong, strong, do it. For a squeamish girl who was reluctant to get her hands dirty just two days ago, it's a big turnaround. I think now that we've learned this way of fishing, it's going to make us feel a lot better about the whole idea of being stuck on the island. At least we can get some food now. Well, fish, we have dinner. To give the family a helping hand, Gilberto has enlisted the help of local woman Carolina and her daughter Sarai. Podemos iniciar con el fuego. Fire. Fuego. Sí. Fire. Yes. Yeah. Step one: a proper Panamanian-style fire. Never thought it was a lot of fire like that. 
I was going to do stones originally, but yeah. we've just come to wood. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to put loads of stones on the side. Yeah, of course you were. Step two, forage for herbs. It smells a bit dodgy. And step three, get to grips with island veg. That is really slimy. In the tropics, wet leaves are a nifty substitute for saucepan lids. With boiled yuca to accompany the catch, the Panama equivalent of fish and chips is served. That is better. Yeah. Than the potato at home. Than the potato at home. Very soft. Mm. It's their Lovely. first decent meal since they arrived on the island four days ago. Eat good. Because today you no, no, them work with us stuff. too hard. And much to the relief of Denise, even Alana's eating. Is that cod? Tastes like cod, doesn't it? I think you are now uh, learning so much here, right? Yes, it's great. The food, fishing. It's very good. Since you've come along, you've made it so much easier. <laughs> As they say goodbye to Gilberto and Carolina, they're on their own again. Bye! With two weeks still to go, their trials have only just begun. You will never let me do anything. This is what I hate. As upping their game... Well, I told you, it's going to have to be killed to be good. ...pushes the Busbys to breaking point. Can I just wait a minute? The following morning, a cooler shelter has proved a success. I've probably had my best night's sleep I've had since I've been here. What, last night? Yeah, I think yeah. you too. Oh, Richard! Over the next few days, the family continue to build on their new skills as they gradually acclimatise to living off whatever they can lay their hands on. Island-style fish and chips. <laughs> and everybody begins to relax into island life. I haven't seen that in a long time, Richard and Lena talking together. It's just nice. Normally, he's walking out the door, she's walking in, and it's like snaps now. <laughs> 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 it's day nine, and having tired of fish, the family are going to row to another island where they think they've heard chickens. What do you need to catch a chicken? A machete. A machete? You're going to chop <laughs> it in half? No. <laughs> well, in case it runs at you, you can just lob his head off. Mum! Alana feels like chicken, do you know that? <laughs> If they want to get there, catch a chicken and get back in time for tea, the Busbies are going to have to start working as a team. Grace, you're going to have to paddle, paddle for me. But things don't start well. I've got one, I told you, useless. <laughs> what? If you didn't No, because you're going like that and you turned the boat round I before I was in it. I haven't done anything yet. Just tell me, left or right? It's the forward stroke that gets you there. Keep going, not like mixing a cake. Because I will throw the pad a little Come on, you're not doing anything. I'm paddling. He, she is. She's not. She is. I'm watching her, Dad. You're All just right, moving. Come on, I'll sit and watch her. Dad! You're not actually doing I'm anything. I'm turning this round! With the boat drifting further and further off course, Richard has to resort to less conventional methods of steering. I thought it was worse. The deep water, the big fish that runs underneath there, so him screaming at me. Yeah. In my life, had to paddle a freaking boat. I know, but if I didn't up. scream at you, yeah. we'd still be out there. Your backstroke was stronger than your. Oh, guess. But it was. The family squabbles are soon forgotten, though, as they spot a potential dinner. Psst, see a chicken. Chicken underneath that bush there. Got a limp anyway, it's crippled. Limpy Joe? Limpy Joe? So no, limp it's cold dinner. Go on, go and get it. I'm scared of chickens anyway. <laughs> Just grab it by its ankle, yeah? And do, do what? I don't Swing know. it I... round? Fuck a doodle do, I don't know. Oi. I'll hold the chicken. Please, I'm just so I hungry. I don't want to. You're not going to eat it now. Chicken. But listen to me. I listen. know, but at least I know that I'm going to have chicken listen tonight. To me. Listen Stop to me. Listen to me. The bloody thing knows it's on its last Listen to me. Listen to me. Shut up. Catch it and tie it to a tree. What? Oh, look, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving. I'm oh, getting you're up. scared of it now. Just grab, grab it by his ankles and we'll throw it in a bag and then we'll think about what we're going to do with it after. We've got I'm going to kill it. Let's no, get it first. It All right, we'll get out of the way. She's limped off. Quick, 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 quick. Layla, get around that right away and chase her back in. Quick, quick, quick. I could just spear it. No, just what? grab it and bag it. Get out! 
out! Get out! Go on, Richard, grab her by a foot. A foot. Got it? Go on, bag it. Quick, 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 shove it in. Oh, right, I ain't going nowhere. One arm! It's a chicken, it's not a snake or a tiger. Oh, my God. That has got to be the mankiest chicken I've ever seen. <laughs> sharp, sharp. <laughs> Listen, sharp. Your daughter's plagued me all this week because she wanted chicken to eat. It's going to be heaven for Lana. They may want chicken for dinner, but once they're back at camp, the grim reality hits. I didn't realise that... I told you what it was going to entail. I told you. Something living and breathing is going to come onto this island and it's going to have to be killed to be good. I will have to pluck it, I will have to gut oh, it. Oh, you're scaring it. You're eating it. The kids aren't the only ones who are having second thoughts. I said it myself at home, if I have to kill a chicken, I will kill a chicken. But you went home. Here I am, I'm going to categorically say, right, there's the chicken right in front of me. I don't think I've got the guts to do it. <laughs> so how in Christ's name do you expect me to kill that? I don't want it here. I'll tie her up over there. Listen. You're not the king of this I don't, island. I don't want it here. I can't walk over you there. You are not the only person here. There are four people here. We're all going to make this decision, all right? The chicken is causing too much of an argument. We'll get rid of it, but then. Dad's causing the argument. I'm not. You are. Oh, I'll say no more. It's nothing doing me. And with that, Richard's off. He's got the hump now. So he's got the hump. I'm stuffed. I am absolutely stuffed. I'm stuffed if I do, and I'm stuffed if I don't. It's a tough decision, but it's one Denise knows she has to confront. Listen, I've decided the chicken dies, OK? I'm going to take her up to the woods and do what I have to do. At least she'll be in a better place than she'll, you. Thank you, Alana. She will be in a much better place in heaven, chicken heaven. That's right. Your father's out there on a boat, much easier. We'll is. go down to the beach. Right. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm looking out his skin off. This is just disgusting. It's not an experience I'll do again. It wasn't nice at all. It was a bit distressing. It was actually very distressing. Ten minutes later, Richard's back. It's not the best place to do it, is it? And he's as supportive as ever. So you want me to get you that job in the abattoir? No, I do not want a job in the abattoir. What did those two say up there when they you... They didn't say a word, actually. They were very good about it. Thank you, them all. quite this time. As much as I looked to worse having a bit of a blub there, once I'd finally done the dirty deed, I think that was more myself, the shock that I killed something. It's been a challenging day, but later that night, the whole family reaped the rewards. It looks like peeking duck, doesn't it? <laughs> and if you're in a better place... Stop. <laughs> well, she's a bit of a tough old girl, isn't she? <laughs> Is, Dad, are you eating the rest of that? What if I want some more? I want some more than that, some more, Yeah. Is it nice to see Alana eating? It's day 10, and the joys of roast chicken have already worn off. There are chores to be done, and Alana's not happy. Whilst Mum has begun to strike out and show Richard what she's capable of, their 10-year-old is feeling suffocated. I don't need to sharpen that, sweetheart. It's not a knife. It's only for sharpening things. Well, well, don't use that. I'll show you. Use a whip wipe or something. You'd have to dry it immediately as well. A tussle over the washing up is the final straw. What's wrong? Lana's got it. So there, you got da, 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 not on the towel. No, not on the towel. No, no, that's what I mean. Give it to Layla. Please, please, give it to Layla. You will yeah. never let me do anything. This is why I hate No, see. Just leave her. Oh, my God, if I knew she wanted to wash up so badly, I'd let her do it at home. Ooh. 
let me do anything. Let me fast. I think I'm a baby and don't let me do it. I'm just supposed to be the ten-year-old that sits there playing games and watching TV. I never get to help her in the house. I just want to prove that I'm not one of them kids that watches TV all day. Before they arrived on the island, the girls rarely saw eye to eye. But now Layla steps up with some sisterly advice. I think we all need to chill out a bit more. We do let the heat get to us and then we all end up bickering. Well, they don't let me do anything. It's not a case of they don't let you do anything. It's a case of there are things that you can't do. Washing up? Well, no, because Dad needed to wash up the really sharp knives. You're 10, you can't do stuff like that. You have to understand that. You've got to try not to get too frustrated. Yeah, yesterday I said I'm going to be the little girl I was when I was five. Never moaning, never crying if somebody upset me. Or... And what, are you going to live up to that? Yeah. So are you? Starting from now. Starting from now, OK. Let's see how long that lasts. Busbies have been on their tiny island of Membrillo in Panama for two weeks now. They've seen no one but their guides. So today they'll travel further afield to the nearest inhabited island, Casaya, two miles away. Here, just 50 people live in some 20 homes. <laughs> There's just one street, one telephone, and one way of life. Most locals make their living from the sea, earning as little as a few dollars a week. Stepping off their island for the first time in a fortnight, the family are met by a host of new faces. Hola. This is their chance to discover a new culture and see what it can teach them. Be like really cramped. Sanzo, Sanzo, that's nice and cool. At the tiny church, art student Layla is smitten. They're lovely kids, they really are. But the real focal point of the community is the local beach. Bienvenidos a Playa Grande. Lovely, La Playa. And like beaches the world over, the atmosphere here is relaxed, life revolves around the family, and everything is shared. <laughs> oh, wow, what have we here? Thank you very much. Is this for all of us to eat? But Panama-style coconuts are no pina coladas. I've got a straw. A straw, a nice big straw and an umbrella. You've got a bit of vodka in it all. <laughs> it's a shame, because we're British, we're just so fussy about the way we eat. We're embarrassed to spill it all over ourselves. These kids are just guzzling it down like sweeties. It's kind of up my nose and everywhere, but it's lovely. I've <laughs> <laughs> got a face full of sand as well. Where are you going to get Whilst Alana and Layla let their hair down, even Richard chills out and tries his hand at pearl diving. This is the first time in two weeks that the girls have mixed with anyone their own age. They're just bonny, the kids, the local kids. They really are. I mean, they've got so little, you know, compared to our kids at home. You know, instead of sitting there saying, oh, I want my DS and I want my mobile phone, and they're not the play, they're interacting and they're just getting on with their own thing. I hope it makes my two a little bit more appreciative of what they have got at home. Today was nice, it was just a nice break. Get off the island, a real chill out day and I think it's good for Richard, too. How'd you get on? I don't know, we've got a bag of goodies here. Oh, right. Might be something that you like, you fancy, come on. And that one's an oyster? Oyster. Yeah. Oyster. Might have a pearl in there. No oh, pearl. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Can this be you and Yeah. Go on. Yeah? It's like yeah. horse chestnut. <laughs> She invited me over to, to come to cheer at ours one night. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Do you want you to come to our that? place, to our house? You can come up, 
Dinner. Have some food at our place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. It's goodbye for now. Goodbye. Bye. But in a few days' time, the Busbies are going to have to prepare a feast for the locals back on their island. The following morning, the visit to Kasaya has made a lasting impression. It's nice to see, though, the way people live, isn't it? It makes you feel humble, doesn't it? They were just happy people, and they, they're just content with what they've got, and that's the way people should be. And sometimes you just wish it was like that back at home. Yeah, but it's, it's not. not, is it? It was different. It's different to anything I've ever seen. Everyone looked quite happy. Mm. They seemed very welcoming. I like the fact that everybody had a smile on their face, yeah. you know. People at home, you don't realise it, but you've got everything you need. You've got more than what you need, and you're still not happy until no. you've got more. So why can't our family be happy like that? You are right, there's a lot of stuff we've got at home that really isn't needed. Mm. We're too quick to plug things in and let them play with their DSs and that, because it's easier for us, because we can go on things. That's my worst. Nightmare at home when you've got the computer on, laptop, telly. Yeah, but it's everyone does. We're everyone all in does. We're all, the same. We're all in the same trap. Everyone does because it's easy. It's the, it's the easy option. For the whole family, a glimpse of another simpler way of life has been something of a wake up call. We need to spend more time together. I think that's why there was a lot of arguments at home because everyone was biting and bickering and. We just got too busy in our lives. It's got to stop. Something somewhere's got to give. The Busbys still have one more week on Membrio, and after the visit to the village, they start to embrace all the island has to offer. Oh, oh look at all them birds. Oh, look. Wow. <laughs> ah! Oh, he's a big one. Look at him. They make a hammock and even a hot shower. As camp finally becomes home. But tomorrow they'll have to pull out all the stops and work together to give the villagers a feast to remember. They need to feed over 15 people, so as evening falls they cast their net for one last time. Guests. <laughs> Preparing dinner for the villagers will be a huge task, but for now the family relax and reflect on how far they've come. Huge difference to day one, isn't it? Day one, we were there. I can't remember day one. I just remember thinking, oh my god, what have we done? But now look at us. Now look at us. Yeah. We are hardcore yeah. campers. Do you miss anything? I I just miss going to the kettle and make a cup of tea. Ice cream. Ah. Oh. I miss me fluffy slippers and me smoking you ain't jacket. You've got fluffy <laughs> slippers and a smoking. You're so sarcastic. Take I'm starting to really, really have fun now. I am. The Busby's time on the island is nearly at a close. Tonight, they have 15 guests coming for dinner. The whole family is up early to see whether they've netted any fish. Oh, look at that. What? Holding that net. Hole? But it seems they may have been beaten to it. And that wasn't there when we put it out. Da -da, da -da, da -da. It could be a reef shark or something like that. Thankfully, the predators haven't polished off the lot. It looks like a red snapper. It looks like one. Look at the size of him. Relieved they have something to feed their guests. Oh, he looks nice. He looks lovely, this one. Oh, he looks like we're all in for treats now. Richard and Denise work together to haul in the catch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it was slimy, mate. <laughs> Despite the random attacks from hungry frigate birds. Oh, Jesus, my dread. <laughs> That's it. Ready? No, 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 cos I'm being stalked by one of these pterodactyl things. Oh! Can you start pulling this up the beach, love? 
they've certainly mastered the art of fishing island style. I think it's quite successful, actually. I think we caught a lot of fish there. But more importantly, rather than doing everything himself, Richard is finally relying on his family to work with him. I've learned a lot from it. I've learned a lot from the kids and Denise. I've, you know, there's a lot more to them than meets the eye. They can do whatever they need to do, whatever's needed of them. Until you're put in a situation, you just don't find out about yourself. And I think it's good. He sat back and he realised we're not these three diddy little women that can't do a bloody thing. You know, we, we cope quite well, thank you very much. With the villagers due in less than an hour, everyone swings into overdrive. As Layla expertly guts the catch, Alana finally gets to help Mum with the cooking. Hold it flat and cut it very thinly. All the way down like that, yeah? Mm -hmm. So my fingers, fingers, fingers. All down, all down. You're going to be a chef when you grow up. Mm -hmm. fingers, fingers, fingers. Mm -hmm. Can't be a chef without fingers. They're all doing their bit, and as the final preparations are made, their guests arrive. Here they come. Come, we better go and say hello. Hola. Hola. Hola, Carolina. Come in, come in. Come see how we live like tramps. <laughs> this is our house. Keeps the rain out. As from, as from tomorrow, it's for sale. So <laughs> in Maybe I will buy. Yeah, you can buy it. <laughs> It's Denise's special of fish and chips on the menu. Do the kids like chips? Patata fritas. Patata fritas or yuca fritas, was it? We don't even have barbecues in England. It's too cold. She won't. Right, if we have a barbecue, uh -huh. she cooks it all in the kitchen and then brings it out. Oh, no. <laughs> Alana dives in with the kids. Their teamwork approach has paid off. Dinner is served, and Denise's British take on local food goes down well. Good chips, Denise. Or Membrillo style. Membrillo style, Ben. Some of the old folk on the island, they lived there all their lives. 89, 90 years. So they don't want to leave then? No. <laughs> she said no. Why? Muy tranquilo. Is it because the life is very quiet? Yeah, tranquilo. <laughs> Tell them life in London is not tranquilo, it's very hard. Like in London, you can't let the children out to play, it's not yeah. safe. Uh, no, here the children, they have more freedom. It's, it's very interesting for Beijing. Beijing, ¿cuántos años tú tienes? Trece. You have 13 years. He you know how to drive the boat, how to fish, you know, everything here. 13 at home, they're stuck in front of the telly. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a huge success. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank you for everything you taught us. Thank you for everything. Well, we've learned lots since we've been here. And we'll bring it back to our country and we'll see what we can do. Bye. <laughs> As the islanders prepare to leave, the Busby's time on Membrio is nearing its end. Bye. Bye. See ya. Ciao. They've come a long way since they first set foot on the island three weeks ago. On day one, they had no shelter. I can't see who's going to bed tonight. And no clue. What are you supposed to be doing? I don't know. They despaired. Jesus, Richard, what have we done? Can we not just go back to the hotel? Ah, shut up. <laughs> Moaned. Layla, are you actually going to do anything? And bickered. Please, please, give it to Layla. You will never let me do anything. This is what I hate. And over the weeks that followed, they struggled to work as a team. Your backstroke was stronger than you. Oh, yes. It was. But once they learnt the skills... Put Jane in the jungle. ...and faced up to the toughest of challenges... They began to learn about each other too. We need to spend more time together. The three weeks are over. 
Tomorrow, the Busbys are flying back to London. This is the last time we're going to be sitting here doing this. Good. Oh, I've enjoyed spending time with you and the kids. It's been yeah. great, yeah. You'd never have known. <laughs> You'd never have known. It's been great. What a beautiful view. Yeah, I'm glad I've done it, because it's something that, you know, you're not, you'd only do once. It's taught us all how to, like, communicate better with each other. I think people have got more understanding, they've got more time. Just before we came out here, I was saying, like, we'd all started to lose our sense of humour a bit because of work and running around, and we've all discovered our sense of humour again, you know? I don't think I lost mine. I think Richard lost his a bit. We definitely got it back. <laughs> We've learned so much as a family about each other. And, you know, that's what we take from it. I think before I came, I, I, I took things for granted. You know, it was just a case of, yeah, whatever, to everything. You know, typical teenage, sulky stuff. But now that I've been here, like, you know, I think I'd go home and I'd appreciate the fact that I have everything. I think Alana's... She's grown up a little bit since she's got here. And she's become more patient. And I think she's, she's earned a great deal. I feel really upset that I'm going home tomorrow, but nothing I can do about it. I'm going to miss seeing a beach every day. I don't think I realised how fast the pace was at home. And it is too much of a rat race. It is. I want out. I thought in a couple of weeks. I want out. Bye, Rock. See you later. Roast potato. <laughs> Shut up, what is wrong with you? I, the heat's got to him. One month later, back in Harrow, the Busby's Island experience has made a lasting impression. I know, we did learn more about each other. I think Dad's come to grips with the fact that all the women in the house, we're capable. We can do things for ourselves. They don't want to do normal things anymore. You know, I'm not saying Layla wants to go down and start cooking fish and lighting fires. You know, they want to do different things. Since we've been back, Alana has got very grown up. Definitely being on the island, it's just cleared my head so much. So it's made me more sure of myself, more confident. All of the family have noted a big change in Richard. Richard's got a lot more laid back. Richard's the Richard I knew years ago. It's really weird when this has changed because now if I go to work, there's no work. I ain't worried. I don't care. I don't earn the money. I don't earn the money. And it's just, I just laugh and come home. But the whole family has undergone one transformation which has pleased Denise above all others. I was really worried that we were drifting apart before we went. Since we got back, we really haven't been. Yeah, so I've got what I wanted. <laughs> I've got me going back. 